Hi right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous Monday here in the former drought plague wasteland of South Austin, Texas. And while we wait for the U.S. government to shut down, I was just up here on my rock doing my usual Monday morning economic meltdown roundup rant. You're welcome to go listen to that. But in the middle of that rant, I talked about a, a story, uh, I introduced a story that was the, what I consider to be the single best, most intelligent story I have ever found since the day I was born, certainly since the day I've been doing this for uh, how many years have I been a, been a doomsday prophet, five years now. Uh, this is the number one most intelligent story that I have ever found on the business page, and, and it came from CNBC. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I'll have my little tail, I, I, I guess, has gone from uh, covering the alternate.org environment page to the CNBC business page. But uh, I, I am uh, thrilled to report that the alternet.org, uh, the alternative media site, uh, environmental page, would do good by checking in with, with the most mainstream media of all, CNBC, where they would be astounded to find uh, this story. Now, I, I am going to put a link to this long, involved story. I advise you to shut me up right now. Shut me up. Go on the link and read the story for yourself. Uh, you don't need this dumb hippie on a rock sitting here reading you mainstream media stories. But if you want to sit around, I'm just pretty much going to sit here and read the story. Uh, for anybody uh, who wants to sit around and listen to it. Okay, in the name of the story. 2030, a perfect storm of global resource uh, shortages. Perfect storm of global resource shortages over the next 17 years. Okay, now I, I'm going to repeat myself in these first two paragraphs that I just read, and then I, we're going to dig a little deeper into this perfect storm. I want to give credit to John Schoen. CNBC economics reporter. Okay. To the story. <clears throat> Corporate leaders give themselves a lousy grade on their effort to develop sustainable supplies of natural resources strained by. You're hearing this in the mainstream media, guys. <clears throat> supplies of natural resources strained by a growing global population and a rapidly expanding middle class of consumers, mainly in China. With demand for everything from food and water to rare earth minerals expected to continue to rise, companies and governments are increasingly undertaking a variety of efforts to develop a more sustainable supply chain. This is one of the topics highlighted at the Clinton Global Initiatives annual meeting last week. Guys, uh, just, let's see, among other projects, the Clinton Global Initiative uh, last year helped launch Sustainable Waste Resources International to tackle the health and environmental impact of billions of tons of waste produced worldwide. And this year's week-long conference, I guess it was last week, unless it's going on today, still going on today, will bring together more than 1,000 global leaders, some 60 current and former heads of state, including President Barack Obama, along with uh, non-government organizations, 
and philanthropy leaders from over 70 nations to brainstorm ways to head off increasing strains on the natural resources that keep the global economy on track. Now guys, I'm going to leave this article for a, a, a minute just to, just to say, and unless I stumble upon it, unless I missed it the first time I read this article, nowhere in this article at least, and I'm going to take a wild guess that nowhere with the possible exception of a tiny little bit of lip service out of, out of the two sides of their mouth, I'm going to take a wild guess that overpopulation and, and that approaching this subject of, uh, uh, of the collapse of this planet by suggesting at this initiative that we bring down the population of this planet a as a way of fixing every single problem on the planet. I'm going to take a wild guess that it was never mentioned anywhere at the conference and nowhere in this article. Maybe I'll have some egg on my face. But with that little, uh, that little ham bone diatribe, let me get back to the article. Okay. About brainstorming ways to head off increasing strains on the natural resources that keep the global economy on track. And they have a lot of work ahead of them based on the main finding of a recent survey conducted for the UN Global Compact, the world's largest corporate initiative to develop a more sustainable global economy. All right, the survey of more than 1,000 CEOs from across the world, the largest of its kind ever conducted, found that two-thirds, so what would that be, uh, close to 700 of, uh, of these corporate CEOs believe the global economy is not on track to meet the demands of a <coughs> growing population. <laughs> Despite wider awareness of the need to, to adopt sustainable practices, business efforts on, the, on sustainability may have plateaued, according to the report, which I guess was released on Friday. Uh, in the short term, the tough economic climate has made it more difficult for businesses to justify these investments. But the long-term outlook hasn't changed either. Uh, this is according to Craig Hansen, director of the People and Ecosystems Program at the World Resources Institute. Richard generally pretty good guys. Okay, quote, the outlook does look dire for many types of natural resources if we continue on with the status quo. This is exactly what we're continuing on with is the status quo. The tough issue is that many of the places that face those resource constraints do not have the technical or human capacity to adjust and deal with acute shortage. There you go. Back to the CEOs. But the CE, but corporate CEOs report that they're having a harder time justifying the investment in overhauling their supply chains to promote sustainability. Uh, and here you go. Uh, according to the report, signals from consumers are mixed and investor interest is patchy. Guys, uh, <laughs> 
it all gets back to us consumers. Mixed my ass. Uh, go into a go into a goddamn Walmart or a Best Buy and tell me how mixed uh, consumers are uh, on their views about the impending collapse of the planet. It is business as usual on this planet uh, for the simple reason that more and more consumers uh, in terms of number and ability uh, they want the cheapest shit available. More and more of this cheap shit. The cheaper it is, the more uh, stuff they can buy. Uh, how many times have I said uh, to save a nickel on a gallon of gas, the average gasoline consumer anywhere on this planet would, would any day choose throwing their children and grandchildren into a burning lake of fire before they would voluntarily vote for a five cent prize uh, in the ga and a gallon of gas. Uh, the price of gas and all of this other planet-eating shit is much higher on, uh, on the minds of consumers than the collapse of a planet. And so, of course, this is what, you know, that, that uh, all of these global industrial corporations understand this. Uh, you know, and so uh, the CEOs also say that for any of these bullshit efforts to succeed, both businesses and governments need to collaborate better to apply solutions across uh, across industry. And uh, yeah, right. Guys, it ain't happening. <sighs> Global businesses may also feel less urgency to advance sustainability at a time when sluggish economic growth has eased the upward pressure on supplies of raw materials. Uh, they go through that, uh, and here's the, I like this quote, uh, this is one of these companies, SAP, where they, anyway, this is Peter Graff, I like this guy, quote, there is always the hope <coughs> that you will find more, <coughs> meaning more oil, more gas, more coal, more this, more that. And there's always the hope that you'll find more. Mankind has become more and more sophisticated as, as over the last 100 years to go and exploit those resources. The problem right now is that demand is outgrowing our ability to find new resources. Damn, the risk is that we are outgrowing our ability to find new stuff. <laughs> Guys. Uh, all right. Where have you heard this sentence before? The relentless growth of human populations in the modern world has brought dire warnings of resource shortages ever since British economist Thomas Malthus more than 200 years ago predicted that overpopulation would bring a catastrophic famine. You might think, guys, this would be the point that uh, this mainstream media article might start saying maybe we could reduce the worldwide growing population. But you think this might be the point, might, might be the time, but I guess not. All right, because they go right on talking about uh, tight supplies of raw materials. 
Uh, and as a result, for much of the last century, while as the global population has, has tripled, the global economy was fueled by a seemingly endless supply of cheap, abundant, raw materials. But the rapid expansion of the global pool of middle-class consumers is now straining the world's supply of natural resources from energy and minerals to water and food at a pace that would make Malthus say, I told you so. Now, uh, this guy at least uh, has it half right. This is uh, Fraser Thompson, a senior fellow at the McKinsey Global Institute. At least he gets half of it. It is not the total of number, uh, the total number of people. It is the number of people in the consuming class. That is where the real transformational change is happening. At least the guy's half right. It is the number in the consuming class that is uh, half of the problem. The other half of the problem is the total number of people. And the numbers are stark. While the current population of about 7 billion is projected to top 8 billion by 2030, almost all of that growth is expecting to come in the developing world. That means the current population of consumers, that would be people with more than $10 a day to spend, is expected to more than double from 1.8 billion people today to 4.8 billion people uh, by 2030. And then they go from there to start breaking down. Why are we not surprised to find the number one stress, water stress? And they break down all of what's going on with uh, water stress. Uh, and then that seems, I guess they just pick one. And I, let's see, uh, and then they go back, uh, I'm just going down this article, uh, uh they, they actually, peak oil actually makes, makes, a make, makes a show here. After dire predictions of peak oil a decade ago, for example, rising energy prices spurred investment in new production. Can you say fracking? New technologies prompted a boom in production of unconventional shale uh, products, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that is how we fix that, of course, no mention uh, of global warming in this. But the solutions uh, to energy shortages are more difficult to apply to resources like water or food, especially in the developing world where demand is expected to grow uh, more rapidly than at any time in history. Uh, between now and 2030. You will see this shit demand on the planet's resources ramping up more than any time in human history. And much of the resources that exist are in harsh geographic locations with limited access to infrastructure. Can you say the Arctic Ocean or the Amazon jungle? Oh boy, then they start talking about recycling. Uh, and it goes on about how we're not going to save the planet uh, with recycling. It's going to help, but it ain't going to fix the problem. Then they look at all these bullshit uh, technologies. These, these uh, techno YouTube utopians quote, I don't even know which one of this, these techno-utopians, trying to say that you're doomed 
because you're not going to be able to solve it with today's technology is a self-defeating premise. So uh, there you go. So the, we're going to save the planet not just by recycling, but all of these new technologies uh, and how we're going to rebuild all of these aging infrastructures, blah, blah, blah. And for the rat last word, uh, last sentence in this article and the last sentence in this rant, as uh, some guy, Graf, uh, sums it up, quote, we can sit here and hope and wait that research or someone will come along and figure it out and let us continue to do what we've done in the past or we can take the bull by the horns and optimize our use of resources today and there you go so we can recycle and we can come up with genetic engineering and, uh, and different ways to get more oil out of the well. Or, this is just an idea that I'm going to throw out there if we're leaving this rant. Uh, we can do all that, or we can decrease demand by, number one, uh, making a, a little bit of changes in our own personal consumer and lifestyle choices here in the developed world. That's one crazy uh, idea that I'll throw out there. And the other completely eco-Nazi idea, since it wasn't mentioned in this mainstream media article, why don't we decrease demand by lowering the this planet's population of consumers? But that will be for future rants. For this rant, I just want to say thank you, CNBC Finance, for uh, for doing what? Uh, for sounding a little bit like Humpty Dumpty. Bye, guys.